Whoa, what is that fancy graphic there? Woo! That's fancy. Someone's been talking to designers. Hey guys, JC Peretz here, founder of allstarcharts.com, and I am joined once again by my main man, Mr. Sean McLaughlin. Shawnee, step right up. My man, how you been? It's been a little while since we've done this. So it's been a little while. I was doing a little day trading this morning. Um, yeah, you're a day trading fiend, man. We can't even, I can't get your attention at all once the market opens at 930. I quit my job. I quit my job in the mornings, first 90 minutes of the day. I was in there a little longer today. I was in there for, I guess, 90. I was in there for 150 minutes today. Um, but yeah, man, Kimmy's crushing it. So if I'm not in there in the room day trading, uh, what am I even thinking? So, uh, it's great. I used to always be a terrible day trader, uh, like hard, like one of like the worst ever maybe. And, um, you know, I feel a lot more comfortable trading with Kimmy during the day. We we're two for two yesterday. Still got a couple of open positions from today. See how we finish up. Uh, but I like it. I like it. So, so this is not a day trade. This is the furthest thing from a day trade. We are going out. Uh, we're going out till next summer on this one. Uh, we're looking at John Deere. First of all, ton of relative strength out of industrials, ton of relative strength out of uh, just uh, global markets outside the United States. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily consider Deere as part of that. I think of more like Caterpillar as part of that global trade. Uh, but Caterpillar and Deere look very, very similar. So we're looking at this trade, and Sean's like, "This is my favorite kind of trade." Uh, and I don't want to steal your thunder. So why don't you tell the folks just why this is your favorite kind of trade? This is my favorite kind of trade, JC. And we've talked about this before. Is I love buying stocks that are at or near all-time highs. And I'm not breaking any ground here. Many people talk about this. But the thing about stocks making all-time highs is that there are no bag holders in this trade. Everyone who is a long-term investor, everyone who is a swing trader, everyone who is a day trader holding long positions in this stock at a stock making all-time highs is making money. And when you're making money, you're not really in a hurry to sell. Meanwhile, if you're one of the unfortunate people holding a short position in a stock making all-time highs, the only way you make the pain stop is by buying the stock to cover your short position. So stocks making all-time highs, I love those kind of stocks. There's no overhead supply. There's nobody trying to sell. It doesn't mean they're just going to go straight up, but there's a lot less in the way for the stock to make a big run. So that's number one about why I like buying this stock. Number two, the other part that makes this my favorite setup is that in addition to this being at or near all-time highs, volatility, implied volatility is at the lowest levels it's been for, I mean, close to two years. This chart only shows about six or seven months worth of implied volatility data right there. But right now we're at about a two-year low what that means, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term implied volatility, it means that the pricing of options, the premium that we pay for options, is at the cheapest levels it's been uh, for over a year. So when options premiums are cheap and a stock is about to make new all-time highs or potentially make new all-time highs, and I could buy calls cheaply to participate in a move like that, I get real excited, JC. You know, one of the things that I, you know, all the things you said are great and all of that makes perfect sense. Sort of unlimited upside, great thing. Um, you know, implied volatility, in other words, we can get into the trade very inexpensively, you know, so all, all great. You know what I really love the most about the whole thing? All that stuff is great. I love that the, uh, the risk management is already built into the trade. We're limited partners for all intents and purposes. We can't lose more money than we put in. You place the trade. That's it. The money's gone. In my eyes, that money is gone. Never going to see it again. You do a really nice job of like adding an additional layer of risk management, which we can get into now in a minute if you'd like. But forget all that. That's just like added, just uh, added risk management if you so choose to. But just even if you are incredibly reckless and irresponsible, you already have built in risk management. And, you know, when it comes to sleeping at night, the fact that I know that no matter what, no matter the world ends tomorrow, the stock market crashes, whatever, we can't lose more money than we invested. I love that part of the trade. The unlimited upside, fantastic. No, you know, nothing wrong with that. I really like that a lot. 
the built-in risk management. I really like that a lot, Sean. Right. And, and there are three components to the risk management in this particular trade. You already hit on the first one. This stock could go to zero tomorrow. And the most we will lose is the premium we pay for these options today. I paid $15.50 for them. You could probably get them a little cheaper now because uh, the stock has come down a little bit with the market. But hey, as long as the market holds and finds a bottom here shortly, which we think it will, I think Deere is going to be one of the leaders coming back up. Uh, so we've got that part of risk management, right? We can't lose more than what we paid. Secondly, we do have a risk management level that we'll pay attention to. In this case, 420 is the level I'm watching. 420 is basically the high right because before you're in Colorado? announcement. Is that why? What's that? You're watching 420 because you're in uh, Colorado? Yeah, well, you know, I'm uh, I'm typecast, I guess. Uh, but yeah, 420 is the level we're watching, uh, which not only coincides with the high right before earnings, uh, but also uh, it doesn't show on this chart, but that's kind of where the rising 50-day moving average is kind of coming up, and that's right about where it is right now. So 420 feels like a good level for the, for support to hold. So that's the second piece of the risk management. And the third piece, and we talk about this all the time, JC, when you and I buy long calls, is that I love to sell half of my position if I'm if I get an opportunity to do so at half of or at double of what I paid. So in this case, I paid fifteen fifty. If I could sell half of my calls at thirty one dollars, which is a double, then I've been paid back all of my original risk capital. Yet I still have half of the position on at no risk to me whatsoever. And I'll, I'll be long until June, uh, no matter what happens. And that could be a really great situation. I love that. So these are the 500 uh, strike calls. Uh, so the price of the stock right now, down 2% on the day, you're just under 430. So these are the 500 calls. Uh, if we could sell that for 30 and change, we'll take half off the table, let the rest ride. We're looking at June. This is six months out. Long, long time. Uh, I would love to be in a position where... You know, we could take half off the table and just let it run for the next six months. That would be fantastic. In a worst case scenario, we are dead wrong. The stock goes to zero. We can't lose more than what we paid for the calls. So this gets back to position sizing, right? Mm -hmm. I have to be willing to lose all of that and be okay with it. Like, all right, not a big deal. We lost it. No big deal because the potential upside is exponentially greater than that risk that we're taking. And that's why we're willing to take that risk. So if you position size accordingly, and I feel like every trade always comes down to position sizing, but this one make, keeps the math easy. The math is very simple. You know, the most you could lose is how much you make. How much can we, you know, is, is how much you invest. How much can we make exponentially greater? I really, really like that a lot. And you know, one thing we didn't even talk about, JC, I didn't talk about it in the blog post or uh, so far right now, but we might, one thing that might help this position along is the, it's like a Yeti, the rarely seen thing in the forest, but the $500 roll is up there on the horizon. That's Is a that one. a thing? Is that a thing? The $500 roll? Well, any, any hundred round number is a, is a thing, but 500 is pretty rare, right? Like most stocks do splits when they start getting into the hundreds and $200. So $500 roll, that could be a thing that could help us along. That could be a big Dude, when we have when we have options trades with like two, sometimes four legs and they do a split. Oh my God, the math is just, I just give up. I just call you. I'll be like, Sean, just tell me like it's, I hate that uh, with calls. It'll be a, it'll be a much easier scenario if they do a split for whatever reason. I'm not saying they that they're going to split or a, or a special dividend. That one's even worse. Dude, the other day, uh, Taiwan did a special dividend it was like a $5 dividend and showed the stock was, you know, the ETF was down 15%. Straza thought we were going into World War III because Taiwan was gapping down 15%. I'm like, dude, it's just a special <laughs> dividend. Relax. Well, like, hey, because if, if Taiwan's down 15%, something's going down out there. Well, hey, public, public service announcements. Since we're talking about dividends, um, I know there's a lot of people who trade uh, SPY options, SPY. They go ex-dividend tonight. So if you're holding any uh, uh, short calls that are in the money, uh, you may want to pay special attention to that because you might get caught. Uh, so look into that before the market closes tonight. All right. So today is Thursday, December the 15th. I am JC Peretz. This is Sean McLaughlin. And we are long the Deer DE June 500 strike calls for approximately $15 and change. If we're able to sell half of that position for twice what we paid um, that is fantastic. We'll go ahead and do so and let the rest ride. Um, you know, I, if, if we get a breakout here, I don't know if it happens this week. Maybe it doesn't happen until next month. 
Maybe it doesn't happen until next quarter. But if we get that breakout, you know, we get that elevation. You're talking about 500. If we see 500, I think we see close to 550. Um, that's, you know, come come this spring, uh, come baseball season, we can be having that conversation. I look forward to it, Shawnee. Sunday, who do you got? You got this, or Saturday, actually, I should say. Who do you got, the Dolphins or the Bills? Oh, stop it. Do I have my Dolphins gear? I don't have any Dolphins. I'm a little disappointed you didn't come to the show. I didn't, didn't do it. I, didn't I do thought it. for sure you'd be wearing your Dolphins hat. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> there it is. I do got my oh, Dolphins. No. Those these things are, are sweet, huh? Oh, man. Honestly, my that. wife bought me these shoes, and I, I mean, they're obnoxious. They're the Dolphin shoes, uh, but they're actually the most comfortable shoes I own. This is oh. true. This is true. You're, you're going to need them because it's going to hurt on Saturday night. It's going to hurt Stop on Saturday it. night. Stop hey, man, it. This is All the right, John Deere. Let's go, DE. Uh, the industrials, again, I'll reiterate, a lot of relative strength out of these industrials. Keep an eye on these, not just Deere. Look at Caterpillar and some of the others. Uh, but I do like the risk reward here on the calls. Um, nice call on this one, Sean. I see what you did there. I see what I did there. All right, guys. Adios. Get back to your day trading. Go Bills.